Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you of my opinions on Call of Duty Vanguard. I've been fortunate enough to see multiplayer gameplay and campaign gameplay already, so I wanted to tell you today what I think about this, both good and bad, and we will have plenty of bad to talk about because I feel that it's important to share my honest opinions with you, the audience. It'll feel a little awkward since I know a lot of the developers for this game, but having an awkward conversation later is not as important as getting out the best information for all of you today. The gameplay is of course Warzone, just the most popular COD product at the moment since Vanguard isn't out yet, and we're going to talk about all of these opinions after today's sponsorship segment. Are you living a life devoid of meaning because you've never defeated a demon lord, an ice golem, or even ascended to the top of the doom tower? Well, you're in luck because today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, and you can download this app right now with the link down there below in the description and get your life together. This dark fantasy RPG added a new character this month, Ninja, who you may recognize as looking a lot like Ninja because Ninja got his own character in Raid Shadow Legends. He's part of the new Shadowkin faction with both Katana and Bow and Arrow, Fire and Ice, a very loaded kit, absolutely awesome at destroying bosses and mini bosses. Kind of a boss killing machine. What I like most about Raid Shadow Legends is that it's a nice casual game for me to pick up after shooters so I can sit there and I can really use my mind in the turn-based combat instead of Twitch reaction skills. And I kind of like dungeon crawling kind of games. It's not quite the same as grindy, but I enjoy powering through dungeons and bosses and stuff, so Raid Shadow Legends is right up my alley. So what's new in Raid Shadow Legends? Well, this month you can unlock Ninja for free just by logging in. I think it's seven days in a row. Very easy to unlock this very powerful character. Raid added a bunch of new quests this month, new events to take part in, and some changes to the Doom Tower, but mostly they revamped the clan system, adding new benefits for clan wars and a new clan shop to participate in. So what are you waiting for? Download Raid Shadow Legends with the link in the description. It'll give you a free character, Kanoru, who's excellent in the Doom Tower, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, an energy refill, and an ancient shard to give you another basically awesome champion to start the game with along with the fact that Ninja is very easy to unlock. If you're looking for all this stuff as soon as you complete the tutorial, it'll be in the treasure chest in the upper right hand corner. Well, that's all for this sponsored segment. I hope that some of you do check out Raid Shadow Legends. Now let's get back to the video. And now that we're back from Raid Shadow Legends land, let's start off with something bad, a criticism. And the number one thing is that I just don't care for World War II setting anymore. I think I'm totally burned out on this. In the Call of Duty franchise, this would be, what, the fourth one? We had COD 2, we had World at War, then we had World War 2 in 2017, which wasn't very long ago, and from the same studio. Then in the meantime, we had Battlefield 5 coming out and flopping. We had a couple of other World War 2 shooters that never really caught on, and I've seen a whole ton of World War 1 and 2 media. There's just this trend of, like, super old war stuff going on, and I am completely burned out of it. I am not really in the mood for any old-timey kind of thing. I don't want to see Vietnam. I don't want to see the Spanish-American War. I don't want to see World War I. I don't want to see the Korean War. I was just kind of in the mood for something modern or at least close to modern. Uh, Call of Duty Cold War is about as far back into the past as I've really been feeling lately, so the setting isn't something that I'm feeling. I do understand that some people love it. They love the history. They love the stories, the battles. You know, this was the world at war. But I feel like I've seen and heard this story so many times over, it just does not catch my attention. And it really limits the weapons and technology and forces the game to do some unrealistic things with attachments on these very old guns. A good thing that's coming back, and I can't believe that I'm saying it this way, it'll probably be taken out of context later, is that it's good that swastikas are back. Nazis are the main villains, they wear swastikas, they're evil, awful, nasty, filthy Nazis, and we get to have that back in our World War II game again. If you may remember Modern uh, World War II, the previous one released in 2017, did not have any swastikas, and you fought the German army, or like the Wehrmacht, or whatever, and they decided to kind of pull all that Nazi stuff out so that it could release in Germany, and this was not long, I believe, before Charlottesville. No, Call of Duty World War II came out a few months after Charlottesville. So that was a time in American history where Nazis were simultaneously popular and also like SJW kryptonite because they kind of like to pretend they didn't exist and like censor them and clean them up out of things. But Sledgehammer Games has found their balls, or at least the political climates have changed where Nazis can be bad again. So for my campaign story, I'm expecting to gleefully kill Nazis with all their swastikas and black leather and nasty, you know, regalia and everything. And I think that's satisfying. For me, it's a good thing to see us returning to actual history and killing the actual bad guys instead of making up more savory villains. 
The next bad thing I want to talk about is a multiplayer gameplay mechanic called Peak Fire. And I did not get to see this in action, so I have to draw some inferences here. But it was told to me that players can take cover behind low cover, which I'm thinking kind of chest high walls or something about head glitch height. And then they can lean over that cover very barely, stick their hand and gun up over and peak fire at enemies. I don't know if this is blind fire. I don't know if this is like you put one gun over and you kind of like lean it on the rock or whatever and it's going to have sideways recoil and be really heavy because you've got one hand. Or if it's just like hip fire over the wall, it seems kind of like the opposite of mounting your weapon in Modern Warfare 2019 or that same mounting system has been turned into something more of like a blind fire kind of thing where you put your Thompson SMG over and just kind of spray over your shoulder and see what you can hit. For me, it seems a lot like contextual cover, but you can shoot over it or perhaps like an advanced head glitch. And I don't know if it's going to be ADS with high recoil or limited vision or hip fire only. I don't know if the hitboxes are gonna work with this properly. Every time we've done things like with mounting and sliding and leaning and peeking, it tends to break the Call of Duty hitboxes which struggle with the net code and everything anyway. So it wouldn't surprise me if these hitboxes ended up somehow broken by this additional mechanic. Another thing that worries me about it is that you're probably gonna have a camo challenge associated with this. It's gonna be like peak fire kill 25 people, which if you're playing on a little map with a shotgun or SMG, it might not be so hard, but then what if it's a sniper rifle in hip fire mode and they're just gonna like default roll out all these peak fire challenges to a whole bunch of guns that don't need them to begin with and make the camo grind very, very difficult. Moving along, I think that the graphics look fantastic. The new Modern Warfare engine is one of the best things to come to Call of Duty in a very long time. You can see the difference between Modern Warfare 2019 and Treyarch's current engine in Cold War. But it's, it's, it's really looking good here for Call of Duty Vanguard. I don't know how else to say that because they put additional improvements on top of the Modern Warfare engine that you're already familiar with. So the smoke looks good, the volumetric lighting, the fog, the color by design. Not a fan of the overall color. It's got this very sepia kind of thing going on in most of the levels that I've seen. It matches like old timey films. I, I get that. I think that's a great show of technology, but it perhaps isn't the most uh, appealing thing for me visually. The poly counts in the game are really high. The effects look good, the foliage, the background, all that looks great. The character's facial animations looks great. So all the graphical stuff is looking really cool. I think the dirt and mud that accumulates on the weapons throughout combat, at least in the campaign missions, looks great. And I'm pretty sure I saw the same kind of dirt in multiplayer. It does remind me of how your guns get a little dirty in Back for Blood and some more modern games. So I think that's very good. I think that, for example, the thing you saw in the trailer of the burning windmill that they run up to is a great example of how good the lighting can be and how like cinematic that it can look. I have no flaws whatsoever with this game in terms of graphics, and I think that it might be one of the best looking World War II experiences ever made. Unfortunately, a bad part of about it is that it's probably going to be a fairly linear experience. The campaign mission that I saw being played through looked more staged than normal for a reveal. I get that for a reveal or what will eventually be a gameplay trailer, they usually brush it up and play it in a slightly dramatic way to make it look better, but this one looked even more set up than normal. And even after I asked some Q&A and eyeballing the levels, the kind of answer that I'm getting is that it's gonna be more of a go here, shoot people, then keep walking kind of thing. It's gonna be a linear experience. It's not a free exploration of World War II. It's not giant maps and stuff like that. It's gonna be like a cinematic experience and it will tell a story, which is probably the main point, but it's mostly gonna be go to this location and in the location, you might have one or two different ways to kill the enemies. You kill them and you keep going. That can, kind of story isn't particularly appealing to me. I hope they have some cooler stuff going on in the campaign because I don't really want to play that type of campaign once again. It just looks very linear. A good thing that isn't linear, at least for multiplayer, it'll definitely break some stuff up, is that destructibility in COD has been greatly increased, probably the best that it's ever been, and it is in some way a core game mechanic now. So Call of Duty maps have been pretty stiff for a very long time. Modern Warfare 2019 tried to fix this with doors. Black Ops went the opposite direction. Call of Duty Ghost tried to fix this and failed pretty miserably with their interactive environments. However, in Call of Duty Vanguard, you can knock down heavy windows that you can't easily shoot through. You can kick in doors, shoot in doors, blow doors up. There's thin walls you can knock down, books, chairs, junk, furniture. There's a lot of stuff that you can chew through with fully automatic fire and just general map structures as well, like pieces of the ceiling or the floor or this 
just all sorts of junk. It would hit me so fast I wasn't able to make a complete list of it. And what's important is that these destructions are supposed to be core to the gameplay as well, meaning that destroying this window or this wall isn't just something you can do because it looks cool, but it's something you can do to open up a sight line to snipe somebody or roll a grenade through a wall that you wouldn't normally be able to do so or maybe escape a dangerous situation by bashing down an iron or a heavy glass uh, structure that you wouldn't have been able to do in a COD game because everything is stiff and kind of inflexible. Another good thing is that the maps are generally designed around this mechanic as well. All of the maps that I saw seem to have these destructible things in place in key areas for you to use them, so choosing to use them or to leave them up for cover or concealment on your end is now a core gameplay mechanic. And I think that moves Call of Duty closer to having good instructable, destructible environments than they've ever had before. But that doesn't mean that this is an entirely good thing. I've got two bads back to back and then we're going to do uh, two goods back to back. So part of this is that doors are back. The doors are destructible this time. You can shoot through them, blow them up, kick them down, whatever. But they still function a lot like the Modern Warfare 2019 doors. The community definitely doesn't want doors in their game, but that's what we're going to get this year. At least now, I suppose, I can just permanently blow them up when the round starts if I want to expend a little bit of energy, and I guess I can shoot through them and peek through them and stuff, but I think a lot of people in the community just kind of don't want the doors. Also, the destruction is not engine level, it is limited to key areas. Now this might be a good thing because it, you know, specific gameplay goals with this, but you can't just flatten buildings and crush the whole map. The level of destructibility strongly reminded me of Rainbow Six Siege. Basically, the way Siege did it is it had some fixtures on the map were completely permanent, others could be destroyed, it was up to the players to learn what was what and take advantage of it, and the maps were generally designed where you could take advantage from creating certain holes and sight lines and stuff like that. However, I think that this is overall a bad thing because of competition, really. Battlefield 2042 is going to be dropping huge fire tornadoes on cities and giant towers and just epic, insane level map destruction, which reminds me of a meme that came out because Call of Duty Ghost launched against Battlefield 4. And Call of Duty Ghost had this thing where like an elevator falls or you shoot some logs and they roll downhill and then Battlefield 4 has the giant like skyscraper that crashes into the map and does Levolution for the first time ever and people made tons of memes about that. I think this year is going to be identical. It's going to be like Call of Duty shooting books and then it's like Battlefield and some huge destructible thing from their beta or full game. And to add a little salt to this injury, I think Rainbow Six Siege already did this six years ago in 2015. I mean... It doesn't look radically different than what Siege had going on. I guess it could be nice to implement that technology, but I think that Sledgehammer is going to get clowned on if they try to make this the new feature for the year or lean on this as being really new or really competitive with either of those games because it probably just won't be. Now we have two good things. We did two bad, we'll do two good. The game has 20 maps at launch, which is just awesome. 16 of these are for Core 6v6. I thought it was 12. In a previous video, I said 12. I've had other people reach out and correct me. So we're going to have 16 Core multiplayer maps, which is just awesome because I think Cold War launched with like four or six or something super tiny like that. So completely the opposite of last year. And honestly, the opposite of a lot of years where we launch with, we're like doing really great if we get 10 maps. Now we have a lot more of that, but we have 2v2 maps. We've got Champion Hill and all that stuff. So after suffering through the map variety of Black Ops Cold War for the first part of its cycle, this is an actual godsend. And then you're still going to have DLC cycles on top of that. So you'll probably get new guns. You'll probably get new maps, new modes, new experiences. So the overall amount of content that the game should have should be quite large, which is good. And the maps that I did see, this is the second good one, look just fantastic. It kind of ties back into the graphics part of this. I kept thinking in my head, Call of Duty World War II Part Two, but the Modern Warfare engine just does things that the developers could not do for 2017 World War II. The maps look infinitely more vibrant, more fun, more cool. The colors are at least more thematic to the game. Everything about them is more lively and modern, unlike modern uh, Call of Duty 2017, which was a tad on the stiff side. So the quality of these maps seems fantastic from a visual standpoint, and they just genuinely look like they're going to be really fun to play in. So I'm really happy with the quality and amount of content that we're going to be getting at launch, except this Champion Hill thing. I... Uh, I'm just not feeling this one right now. I don't know how much I can say about it because I think I signed a different NDA for parts of this, but based on what they've shown, it doesn't look like anything that I'm 
super interested in. Then again, that might be a me problem because I don't think I'm interested in anything that's not Battle Royale at the moment. And I kind of also don't want another year of 6v6 COD. I know that a lot of people in the Cold War community feel like Treyarch killed 6v6 COD or that COD is now a Battle Royale and you can't go back. And I don't know if that's true or not. We I did a whole video on that not long ago, but I don't think I have a desire to play a whole year of 6v6 COD again. I might do Battle Royale, I might do other things, but I just don't know if I care who ca who caps B flag or why. And I also don't think that the overall quality of my experience is going to change very much unless the skill-based matchmaking system is changed significantly. I mean, right now people are just constantly finding ways to game skill-based matchmaking to turn the tables to their advantage and at this point, it, it feels like a whole meta game to fight against that, so I'd love to see a change to that system as well. We have one more set of bad and good before wrapping up today. We do have some good news that a new Warzone map is coming, which is just awesome. I kind of got the impression from the presentation that this is going to be a new full map and not just another like rebirth or like side thing. And I don't think it's going to be a Verdansk reskin. I think it's going to be a whole completely new and different map. And we've seen leaks of such things in the past as well. And this is one of the things that sounds more exciting to me. I can't wait to play in a world in a, like a war torn World War II themed map using only classic weapons. I'm imagining they're going to put it in somewhere in Russia or in Europe, but honestly, imagine the imagine like fighting in the wreckage of the Pacific or like fighting a freaking battle royale map in North Africa or any of these settings are really cool using classic World War II weapons. That aspect of the World War II combat actually sounds really fun and refreshing to me in terms of battle royale at least. And I think it could be even more fun if the new map is designed to allow for the new gameplay mechanics. I don't know if Raven. I don't know if Raven can pull off adding new mechanics to the map that aren't currently in Warzone or if it's just going to have Warzone mechanics but be a new map. But if they take all the new stuff that I've seen from multiplayer and put it into the Warzone map, like mild building destructibility, peak fire, and all this kind of stuff, I think it could be really, really good. And on this same discussion, I think it's a bad thing that anti-cheat is coming later this fall. So hear me out. I've complained about anti-cheat and hackers until I'm blue in the face, quite literally. And I don't, I do not support that in any capacity. However, it really sucks to hear that we've been asking for anti-cheat for 18 months now, and we're being told to wait like three or four more months. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, that's a very short wait. But in the meantime, Warzone is just continuing to die. The viewership is continuing to fall off. And one of the main reasons is just that it's just filled with cheaters. So I have to wait until months and months and months from now when Warzone's even worse shape to get the anti-cheat. But then what if it doesn't work? Here's the scary thing. I mean, it's not like they have a lot of experience rolling out anti-cheats, obviously. What if they put in a new anti-cheat that we've been waited for, we've been hyped for, we're just like, yeah, we can finally play fairly, and it just doesn't work, it gets circumvented in days. That's just gonna, I think if that happens, if people are still cheating after the new anti-cheat, then they're just, the game's just gonna die, which is kind of scary to me. So that's uh, all for the good and bad. I do have a more complex opinion here for Sledgehammer Games or for any of you what I think about it. I think that Sledgehammer Games needs to deliver an awesome core gunfight experience in order to drop a hit. And that sounds a little bit confusing, but you need to have great and satisfying core gunfight content because the the lifeblood of your game, its very heart, is how good it feels when you use your gun to shoot people, how engaging, how dynamic, how fun. So the, the setting, the features, the maps and modes aren't the most exciting thing to me. What I want to see is how it's truly going to play. That'll really determine how it competes against Battlefield. And they need a fantastic core combat loop. Everything from the sound to the recoil to the movement to the balance to the uh, approachability but high scale of skill to allow for counterplay. For example, Apex is fantastic of this. Their gunplay is smooth as butter. They know exactly what kind of game they want to be. They're designing around that. And it's been an excellent shooter for years now. Valorant's kind of in the same way. They copied CSGO a bit, but they know what they want to be. They have a game DNA. They have a plan. They have a mode. They have a feeling, a flow, a loop. There's Splitgate doing a similar thing. And I think I've used this example before, much to the hate of people in the comments. But a totally different game I've been playing a bit more recently, something like Hades, also has this core combat loop where it knows what it wants to be, it knows what it's good at, it knows how to give you these sort of good feelings. And that's what 
Call of Duty Vanguard is going to need more than anything. It's going to need truly satisfying gunplay that makes sense in the context of this game and makes you want to come back for more. And we have no idea if that will be delivered until we actually get to play it. So that's my opinion. You're more than welcome to share yours down there below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.